Okay, good morning um, and welcome uh, to this Saturday morning uh, session on oncology. Hopefully in the next half an hour we'll give you a good overview of oncology from medical and oncology, uh, clinical oncologist uh, perspective, both from trainee, I'm a trainee with Rebecca, and also uh, from an academic side and also from a consultant side. I'll let each one of the talkers introduce themselves. We're going to uh, split this session so each there are six of us who are going to speak for about five minutes each and then we can have some questions and answers at the end if that's okay. So uh, as I said my name's Adam, um, I'm a medical oncology trainee and I asked my uh, oncology trainees what is uh, medical oncology and you can see there's a whole raft of different things here uh, but but, but some of the themes that, pick, uh, that you can pick out from this certainly um, is, a, is, a, is a patient orientated specialty and that's kind of uh, 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 makes sense really. But you can also see that there are uh, ideas around research about the fact it's an exciting specialty, um, there are trials involved and there's lots of opportunities. But sometimes it's difficult to kind of uh, uh, really um, grasp what actually we do on a day-to-day -day basis but also on a broader aspect. So put this together and basically, uh, fundamentally we, we supervise, we, we care for patients giving systemic treatments, um, but a lot of our uh, workload is actually in the, in the outpatient setting, but we also see patients uh, in patients that come in with complications of their disease or of the treatments that they get, um, which are increasingly more complicated. We wouldn't be able to do that were, were it not for the multidisciplinary uh, working environment we work with with both the clinical oncologists, the surgeons, the palliative care physicians and other medical specialties. One of the things that sets us aside from many other specialties is our, is our um, desire to treat and improve the patients that have cancer. Um, that's being um, giving novel treatments and often that's in the context of clinical studies and clinical trials. Part of that is sometimes related to research, whether that's lab-based, translational research, or within clinical trials. However, ultimately, when you are a consultant, you'll probably have uh, sections of your work that fulfill each part of this. Uh, but actually, you carve your own career. And actually, depending on which part of this job you enjoy, will have a more emphasis on one or the other. But you're not going to be able to get, become a consultant until you've been through the training, and that's my job to talk to you about. So uh, medical oncology is a physicianly specialty, and just like clinical oncology, as you go through, uh, graduate from medical school, you'll progress on to foundation training for two years, and then on to core medical training, which has now become internal medicine training, um, either two or three years. Now, while core, um, shape of training, as it will be implemented in the next couple of years, some of the details are still to be confirmed in terms of contributions to take and the exact uh, emphasis on treatment uh, on the pathways. However, ultimately, after two or three years of internal medicine training, you will then be um, uh, selected to go on to higher specialty training and within medical oncology that falls within the Royal College of Physicians and you proceed to a four-year career um, of training um, within medical oncology where you rotate amongst the different um, uh, the major tumour types whether that be lung, uh, gynaecology, colorectal uh, where you learn to treat, to care for uh, patients with those diseases. There is an exam, unfortunately, but there's only one, and it can be done at any time during the four years. Um, it's seen as the exit exam, but that can be taken any, after any time after ST3. Mm -hmm. And new to this year, we've just had a new curriculum uh, brought in in 2017, as I said, which has a greater emphasis on genetics. It's just dropped off the bottom of the slide there, but also care, uh, cancer care in the elderly and also acute oncology, which are directions of which the speci specialty are changing. And, and it is evidence that, that the, the specialty is continually changing and improving. What else do people do on their path to becoming a consultant? Well, um, many, uh, many of us clinical and medical oncologists do a diploma or certificate in cancer studies, which is normally part-time. They'll at uh, attend a, uh, normally a regional centre or university where they have a one-day learning uh, about the basis of cancer studies, uh, uh, the underlying basis of cancer, and it's a good opportunity to meet uh, other colleagues. Many oncologists also do out-of-program research or training. Uh, that can be part of either a PhD or MD. That can be translational. That can be clinical trial-based. Some people go abroad and some people do teaching. So it can be quite broad. 
what are the bits that no one else tells you? Actually, I think that everyone's going to tell you here, so I'm not going to concentrate on these at all. But for me, I think that um, continuity of care is really rewarding in, this, in our specialty, whereby you see patients sometimes one, two, or every three weeks. You really get to know them, and you can see exactly how your patients progress. Um, and also the fact that we're using some of the treatments that, that, that you read in the BBC and on the front of the page, uh, papers often two or three years before uh, it gets into the news. And as I said, we work in a great dedicated team that everyone is, is driving the care to improve the, uh, the cancer care of patients. So I, th I think I'm nearly done with my time, but I've obviously only spoken about the first nine to ten years. Um, but for a, to be a fruit, I would hope that you can progress on to become a, a fruitful a career and to become a consultant and beyond that. And there are many pathways and many different aspects of your career as a consultant. I would just say that my medical oncology is a really exciting specialty and it's one of the most exciting times uh, to go into the specialty because of all the new treatments, the treatments like immunotherapy. Sophie here does CAR T cells, which are even more exciting, um, and other targeted treatments. And while there are many challenges within the specialty, I think that it's really um, a really exciting time to be within and certainly very rewarding. So with that, I will pass you on to Rebecca, who's going to talk about uh, training in clinical oncology.